Welcome back to Core Cutting Today, where we break down some of the biggest things happening in the world of core cutting, including today, the FCC wants to make sure your devices are more secure so they can't be hacked. Increasingly, there's more devices from Roku's Fire TVs to webcams and dishwashers that are Wi-Fi connected. They want to put a program in there to make sure that you're secure in your home. We'll tell you what's happening there. Pluto TV is turning 10 years old, and YouTube TV is continuing its domination of core cutting. I'll tell you how the others are stacking up here in a quick moment. First though, if you're new here, you can find a link to each story I talk about in the show notes down below and in the first pinned comment, so you can read about it for yourself and come up with your own opinions. I'll love to hear from you. If you're new here, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here so YouTube recommends our content to more people, helping us grow and hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost of TV, but still watch the shows you enjoy. All right, let's start off with the FCC wants to make your internet connected devices safe from hacking. The FCC is increasingly growing worried about the number of internet connected devices in our homes from Wi-Fi baby wife cameras to smart TVs to uh, smart speakers and the like around your home. Doors, dishwashers, uh, washing machines and the like are all now increasingly becoming Wi-Fi connected. To help with this, the FCC is creating a program that it says will allow it to um, say, hey, this device has passed basic security measures to keep it safe. This will be called the US Cyber Trust Mark and companies will voluntarily be able to submit their devices for recognition of this mark and if they pass it, they'll be able to put a label on their device that says, this has passed the US Cyber Trust um, standard with the Cyber Trust mark on it. Now, this is great because it'll allow you to know, hey, this device has passed some basic security measures that the FCC has put in place. According to the FCC, by 2030, there'll be 25 billion connected devices in the United States. I was kind of shocked to see how many devices were connected to my Wi Fi. You know, yeah, I got my phone, my wife's phone, our laptops, I have a desktop computer, we have our smart TVs, hey, we have a smart um, lock, our dishwasher, washer, all that has it seems like nowadays. But then they have all those little kid devices that are increasingly coming on a Wi-Fi also, and suddenly the number of devices has skyrocketed. And this is a great way to know. There's been several stories recently about smart devices being susceptible to hacking out there and to keep them safe. So. With this, Roku, Fire TV, and other people can put labels on their devices and say, hey, we are safe. Now, Roku's recently got into a lot of these devices, not just with its streaming players, but also with its home security system, webcams, and the like that Roku uses to keep their devices safe. We'll keep a very close eye on this, but Roku is, and others, have launched it they're um, secure. Now they'll be able to prove it with this label. Let me know, do you like this idea? Do you think the FCC should be creating this standard to say, hey, these devices have a basic level of security in them? Leave me a comment let me know. All right, uh, Pluto TV is turning 10 years old. Pluto TV is um, one of the earliest um, ad-free streaming services still on the market. There's a few others out there about the same age, but Pluto TV is definitely one of the big ones out there that kind of set the tone for what free ad supported streaming should be. Now Pluto TV is turning 10 years old um, on March 31st and it will be a groundbreaking moment for them. Now increasingly Pluto TV has grown and matured from its early days which was just like a curated list of content from YouTube and other sources later being bought by Paramount and bringing a huge amount of content here. One of the big things Pluto TV got early on is when Hulu kind of shut down their free version. You used to be able to watch Hulu 100% free with ads. They licensed that content over to Pluto TV. That really helped Pluto TV grow. Later, when Pluto TV was purchased by Paramount, um, it allowed it to be able to add a wide range of content um, to its platforms that it has today. Not just from Paramount, but from partners of Paramount out there. Now it has hundreds of content partners including content from um, places like the BBC, for example, not even owned by Paramount. It's kind of hard to believe that when Pluto TV launched, it had no on-demand section. It wasn't until um, 2017 that Pluto TV launched a dedicated on-demand section with it. We'll have to watch Pluto TV. There's a big fight happening. Tubi, Pluto TV, the Roku channel, Freebie, and others are fighting for your attention in what's become the hottest market in cord cutting. The ad-supported free streaming is where a majority of the growth of cord cutting seems to be happening right now, at least in the most rapid growth in it. 
So I want to hear from you. What is your favorite free ad supported streaming services? Is it um, Pluto TV, the Roku channel, Freevee, Tubi, Redbox? There's a growing list of them out there. Leave me a comment, let me know. YouTube TV is continuing its domination of cord cutting. According to our survey, it is the most preferred live TV streaming service and much larger than many of its competitors combined, including Sling TV, Hulu, Philo, and Friendly combined into a single service is not as popular as YouTube TV is with our readers. Last week, we surveyed over 1,000 of our readers and asking them many questions about cord cutting, including what live TV streaming service do you, you use? YouTube TV dominated with 27%. Sling TV came in second with 8.7. Hulu at 7.5. Philo at 6.5. Direct TV Stream came in at 5.6, friendly at 2.9, and Fubo at 2.9% of subscribers. That's a pretty impressive number there. Now, what was interesting is uh, a little under half of all of our readers said they did not use a live TV streaming service. Very interesting numbers. Now, increasingly we see cord cutters when they're in the early days of cord cutting get a service like a live TV streaming. And then often, if you're not a sports fan, migrate to on-demand only options like Hulu, Disney+, Plus, Max, and the like, because they're a lot cheaper. And if you don't care about sports or live events, why pay for something like YouTube TV? And I wonder a little bit if in this survey if we're seeing that, but a gr over half of our respondents said they've been cord cutters for five or more years. Very interesting numbers. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Do you use a uh, live TV service or are you okay with on-demand only? And if you're paying for a live TV service, do you use it for things other than sports? Are you primarily getting it for sports? Yeah, we're gonna use it for others, but what's your primary reason to have a live TV service? Leave me a comment, let me know. All right, one of the most confusing things I've been getting emails about is the new Paramount Plus network. So, all right, let's break this down. There's a Paramount Plus streaming service. There's the old Paramount TV network called Paramount. It used to be Spike, now called Paramount. And now there's a new Paramount network called Paramount Plus, which is the rebrand of Showtime to the Paramount Plus network. This has confused a lot of people because depending where you buy the Paramount Plus network, you may get Paramount included, you may not get Paramount included with it. If you're a little bit confused by this, don't worry. It is confusing, but I have a full breakdown of it over at cordcuttersnews.com. You can find a link in the show notes and in the first pen comment. I'll put a link to each story there I talk about, but this one has a full breakdown. If you're trying to figure out what the difference is between um, the three different Paramounts out there, check it out. And the company's called Paramount. So we've got Paramount the company, Paramount Plus the streaming, Paramount the cable network, and Paramount Plus the cable network. It is confusing, or am I just wrong? You think it's confusing? Let me know. All right, Plex has added five new free channels in partnership with Paramount, including CBS News, CBS Sports HQ. It's, um, goal, I apologize. It's a uh, soccer channel, which name I'm at completely blanking on. As a dyslexic guy, sometimes names I struggle with, and I apologize. A movie Italy channel, an independent channel there. This comes after it added a ton of BBC content recently and other content. Link in the show notes down below if you want to learn more about that. Also, Pluto TV confirmed that six of the channels they announced that would be coming in uh, March are now live. This includes Motor Trend, Fast TV, Monster Jam TV, The Lone Ranger, Universal Monsters, BBC News, and Tough Jobs. Some of these have gone er live earlier, some later, but this is Pluto TV officially announcing them now live on the service. You can find the details about these channels and others that are going live on Pluto TV this month down below. All right, let's dive into the question of the day. If you have a question for me you want me to answer, leave me a comment, start off with something like a question for Luke, so I know it's something you want me to answer, and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, recently, the FCC voted on banning the hidden fees for cable TV companies. They passed that saying cable TV companies must fully disclose all their fees in the advertised price. And I've been getting a lot of questions. Well, when is this happening? What's happening with this? What's the update? Um, and that's what I want to dive into um, with this question here, answer that. What's happening now? They passed this, so what? Well, for one, the companies get a grace window. I, I don't believe the FCC has announced when they're gonna put this rule in effect. I apologize that that's out there and I missed it. But during that grace period, which is typically several months, because companies have to have time to go, okay, we have to go redo our ads. So the FCC says, hey, we're gonna give you a few months to become compliant with this new rule. Well, 
It's expected, has not happened yet at the time of this recording, but it's expected that major cable TV companies or their association that represents them will sue the FCC to try to block this rule. It's widely anticipated that that is to come. Even if it doesn't come, we're probably looking at late this year before that becomes a reality. And it's a fair thing. Hey, I just changed the rules today. I'm not gonna expect you tomorrow to have gone back and changed all of your billboards, changed all your signage, all your radio ads, TV ads, and the like. So they set a, a certain period, hey, you have six months, for example, for that to go in effect. They usually, usually allowance that a little bit later in the process with it. So sit tight few things. I don't think this is over by any means. I do fully expect this to go to court. Even if it does go to court, um, it could still go in effect this year, but I expect a judge will probably stay the order until the court case is done. That could take years. So we may be years before this goes in effect, even if it holds up in court. But we're going to keep a very close eye on it. Keep an eye over at courtcuttersnews.com. As the news breaks, we'll post about it there. And of course, break it down here that um, and the daily core cutting today um, breakdowns. Well, that's it for today. I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care, be safe. Hope you had a great weekend. Happy Monday if you're watching this when I post it. And make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Until next time, take care, be safe. I'll be back again real soon.